the session on a high note with this lovely song. And we're going to use this song as a little case discussion or a case study, because today's session is about uh, characteristics of an effective teacher. Right? So here we go. So let's make it a little interactive session today, right? Uh, not boring lecture because we are talking about characteristics of an effective teacher started on such a happy musical note. So I really want everybody to contribute and uh, share your observations. What did you see happening in the classroom that you think is going to bring in a lot of effectiveness to our classrooms? And I really request all of you to contribute. Let's make it interactive. As it is a post-lunch session, I know everybody's groggy. Nobody wants to come, come in for a program at 2.30, right? So let's just um, redefine uh, classrooms. This is also a classroom, the virtual one. Yes. What did you observe was happening in the class that made it uh, such an interactive, colorful, happy classroom? Yes. Some responses, please. It was involvement of each and every student uh, in the activity. You said it, Sumi, ma'am. There was involvement of all the students, which made it such a happy, colorful place to be. Thank you. Thank you very much. What else? And the teacher himself was involved with the children. Like he yes. did according to the things, the joker. See, you're right. The teacher was so involved yes. and was so much a part of of that class. You said it, ma'am. OK. Wonderful. Thank you for breaking the ice to me, ma'am. I really appreciate. Yes, I would love to hear some more responses here so that we also make this classroom a more interactive one. And let me go back after an hour or so thinking that, you know, there was something effective that that, that happened and not just a dry, you know, session where I spoke and people I don't know whether heard or not heard. Yes. What else did you see was happening? Don't don't disappoint me like this, please. I would really love to hear a few responses from all of you. Otherwise, fine. I have a PPT. I just read it out and finish off in an hour. Don't worry. I really want to give you some tips to make it more effective. I come from psychology, which is a science of human behavior. I mean, we can really, really make it very, very interesting. Come on. Who's next? Yes, I think we, we, there are a few remote centers also associated. Yes, may I hear some responses from the remote centers, please? Yes, now we have four remote centers. So I request the coordinators to kindly please unmute. So those participants who want to speak can come near the mic and unmute and speak, please. Yes, Manjit, sir, you're absolutely right. Participants or students uh, got, a, got an atmosphere where learning became so easy. Hmm. Shabazz G says, song took me down to the memory lane, isn't it? Yes, you're right. This is such a lovely song, which brings back such colorful and good memories for all of us. What did you see was happening? What is the take home as a teacher? What is it that we can pick up from the session and make our classrooms more interesting? That's my question too. Yes, Manjiti, you're right. There was no monotony. So I'm also trying to break some monotony, but I need everybody's help in that. Can't do it alone. Uh, madam, for the to make the classroom interactive, uh, must be the involvement from both the side. Absolutely. But uh, theoretically, it is it sounds very sweet to just involve student and teacher at a time. But usually, when we go practically, though, it don't happen most of the times. Isn't it? Uh, there are many reasons behind it because whatever information we are delivering in our classes, students already have uh, those information. Or you said it. it. Be in the better way also. Isn't it? Yes, yeah. very good. So, very good sharing. Uh, yeah. Instead of delivering the content only to the students, if we mm -hmm. can discuss the things which are beyond to the classes and beyond to the material which is available on the, the internet, if we go with the practical aspects, so that can make it more uh, interesting and interactive, and the student attention can be drawn to the classes. Very well said. Very well said. Sharma sir, I want to uh, thank you for two reasons. One, you switched on the camera. I could see you in person. And then for making a very valuable observation and sharing a valuable observation that whatever we are teaching, they have it already. Yeah. And why the hell, uh, you know, should they come to the classes? And I mean, often we say respect, nahi karte, izzat nahi karte. you know, they have an ample number of resources at their back and call at their convenience. Right. 
So honestly, you, you said it's a literally, practically speaking, they don't need you and I. So there has to be something different happening, isn't it? And sir, uh, I think he has opened um, um, another reason for another conversation. So the cognitive needs or the knowledge need or the information need is uh, taken care of by Google, isn't it? Now, my question to all of you, and, and please interact. I request you very humbly interact, speak up your mind, right? I mean, it's a very open democratic platform. Um, my, my question to everybody, like, what is it that Google, what need of a student is there which Google is not able to fulfill or satisfy, which you and I as teachers can? Any answers, please? As, as one of the things uh, Mr. Sharma has said that, you know, the practical aspects of education. Yes, Sumi ma'am, you wish to say something? Personal connection also. Oh, lovely. Each student should feel that uh, the teacher is talking to him, only, him or her only. Absolutely. Well said. Connection. Isn't it? Internet connection is one thing and human connection is something entirely different. Right? And it's, it's going missing gradually. Right? So, yeah. Google can satisfy the, 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 physical, uh, the, the cognitive needs of students, but Google cannot fulfill the need for connection the need for you know the emotional psychological needs isn't it so if you could tap into that arena i think it is going to make a lot of difference to our classrooms right so quickly talking about uh, uh, our profession right which we all tend to undermine the value of you and i we don't value this profession called teaching right that is how people also don't see much of value in that so I'm going to suggest one book to all of you. It's called What Can I Give? The book was written by Dr. Srijan Pal on Dr. Kalam's life. Dr. Srijan Pal is one of uh, Dr. Kalam's aides, his students. So I, I would request all of you to read that book. So the candid conversation between Dr. Kalam and Sri, Mr. Srijan Pal saying, you know, Srijan asked Dr. Kalam that, so what is it that you would like to be known as? What, what is going to be your legacy? Would you be like to known as a president of India? Would you be like to be remembered as, uh, you know, a missile man of the country, uh, a space uh, scientist, or um, there, there, were, there were so many, you know, I would say titles to his name with this man uh, enjoyed. Dr. Kalam kept listening to the, Mr. Srijan and he said, Srijan, what I want to be remembered as is not even in the list of the things that you've shared, it, shared with me. He said, my legacy would be, or I would love to be remembered as a good teacher. And, you know, as destiny would have it, we all know that Dr. Kalam passed away while he was ad addressing students of I am Shalong. And very graciously, he made an exit from this world, doing justice to the duty, to the role he loved the most, which is called that of a teacher. Right. So trust me, I, I work with very diverse groups and two groups of people who really undermine their worth, either personally or professionally. One is housewives, two is teachers. So my first suggestion or request to all the people who are listening to me today, wear this profession as a badge on your shoulder. Be so proud of being a professional called teacher that everybody understands the value and the gravity of being a teacher, isn't it? So charity begins from home, my dear friends, unless and until we feel valuable as persons and professionals, trust me, nobody is going to make us feel so. Um, I'm going to share another very beautiful study with all of you, just to let you know why it is important uh, to value your profession or how do we actually start valuing our profession? You know, one of the dirtiest jobs in this world is that of uh, the janitors, the Safai Karamchari, you know, the people who clean bed patients. So people, uh, the, the helpers, right? So there was a study which was conducted on um, these janitors who clean the bed patients and uh, there, there, there was a set of people, janitors, who despite doing what they are doing were happy and there is a set of people doing in this profession they are also doing what the rest of them are doing but they they aren't very happy people so when both of these groups were asked what was the reason because the nature of work was just the same right so 
the unhappy group when they were asked okay what do you do you know what how do you describe your job they said what a question to us we just clean the people we 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 do one of the most filthy jobs right we keep them neat and tidy all right so that was their perspective about their job right that we are just we, we just clean people that's it we we clean their shit and we keep their beds clean that's it and then the second group of people were asked what do you do they said we assist the team of doctors and paramedical staff in giving quality of life or maintaining quality of life of critically ill patients so the same job but how do you look at your job makes all the difference to how you feel about what you are doing isn't it so if somebody asks me what are you doing i will never say i'm i'm taking a session i would say i'm igniting you know a very uh, people from a very noble profession and i'm igniting some fire in them about how to become more effective teacher that's what i'm doing isn't it the more value i see i'm adding to all of you all of you to 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 your lives the more justice i would do to this session and better i would feel about myself i will feel very proud and resourceful myself because i look at the larger picture and the difference that this one session might make to each one of you how you look at your professions okay so now i'm going to ask a question to all of you ani there is a lot of questions i'm going to ask all of you and i indeed want you to respond to these questions see it's very very easy to switch off the camera hide behind the wall and neither listen nor participate in the session that's the easiest thing to do you still would get the piece of paper called certificate but if you really want to take home something from my session my only request would be participate okay speak up because you know uh growth is not a sport that is played from stands you have to come into the play field right and show up and play full on so if you're ready to show up and play full on here we go this is um my first question to all of you which we call it self inquiry in psychology what do you do and why my first question to all of you what do you do and why do you do that why do you what do you what why do you do not you do so if somebody asks me this question since i'm a practicing psychologist and i train people right i would say that i empower people knowing themselves better so that they can make informed choices about their lives thus i contribute in enhancing the quality of life of people that's what i do why do i do it one uh it gives it i i mean it makes me financially independent two i feel extremely useful and very fulfilled making this kind of difference to other people's life all right so my question to all of you what do you do and why do you do that any answers please i impact i influence indeed ma'am um, you don't even know how much you in fact impact and influence very well said Yes. Who and do you impact, Sumi, ma'am? My students, my people who come in contact with me. Absolutely, not just your students, but the whole ecosystem that is in touch with you. And why do you do that, ma'am? I'm in the profession, and I feel content. Yeah. This, this it gives you a deep sense of contentment. Of course, it's 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 the profession that you've chosen, right? Fantastic. Thank you. Parimal ji says, "I impart knowledge." Okay, why do you do that, Parimal ji? The why is very important, and the more the number of whys, it will be your commitment. You want to say something, uh, ma'am? Yes, I go for uh, you know. I think about caring and sharing, sharing and caring. I uh, update myself and then share it, and see that they have a positive knowledge. Update mm -hmm. them in that particular field. and uh, then think that you know they will have a good impact on that so updating yes. ourselves and then sharing it as Lovely. a profession as a profession and you know as a passion so that is what i care okay Thank so you. you keep yourself updated share yes. that updated knowledge with yes. with your students yes. right and you do it because that's because my passion passion you are very passionate about that 
Okay, fantastic. Thank you for contributing. Thank, Thank you. you very much. What else? Some more responses, please. What do you do and why do you do that? Ask yourself this question. What do you do? What do you do? Yeah, madam, uh, basically, in my views, in the classes, imparting of the knowledge is not one sided. And being a teacher, we must not feel it. We are there to teach the students, basically. Um, we, it should be the uh, bi directional and it happen bi directional. Indeed. But uh, in my classes, when I go to the class, uh, and I don't think I am going to teach that there, but more I am interested in to learn more from there. So this mm. make uh, me happy and my students also happy because in All that right. case we can have a friendly relationship also okay. in the classes and uh, we can uh, develop new ideas because in that way teacher is also free to speak anything over the topic and okay. students also free to uh, just uh, express their views on the topics. So it mm. can uh, have to the new knowledge also from there. Correct. And so that, for you, um, uh, yeah, yeah, please continue. Yeah. Yeah, so basically this is missing these days in the classes so because classes huh. have been the one way only. That's why students are not turning to the classes because this knowledge yeah. is already there on the internet. But hmm. uh, just uh, having the new thing from the existing one in that way or in okay. the customized way, uh, hmm. that is not available over there. Yeah, so for you teaching and learning is a two-way process yeah. where we are impacting, but you are impacting and also getting impacted in return, yeah, isn't it? And the democratic classrooms where everybody has a chance to speak and imbibe and acquire from each other is going to make classrooms uh, more friendlier places and, uh, uh, and more learning would happen there, right? Yeah, right Fantastic. Yeah. All right. I think Akhilesh, you also said something very similar, that it's a lifelong process. And I want to be a learner from elders as well as from youngsters. No doubt about it. This, uh, learning has nothing to do with age, right? It's all, it's all a mindset as well as an attitude, right? So uh, those of you who haven't responded, go back home and ask yourself this question. What am I doing and why am I doing it? What can I do? Right? Like many people, many many teachers in, in uh, institutions, they're just doing politics. Isn't it? Rather than teaching, it's, it's a lot of politics happening in the institutions these days. So go back. I really, really want you to introspect today. What am I doing? And why do I do that? Right? The answer to that would give you some understanding of being in your profession for this long period of time. Right? Quickly talking about uh, the effective skills. You know, first of all, a teacher uh, must understand that. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you one more question. Uh, who is the epicenter of the whole teaching learning process? Who's the most important element of our whole process of teaching and learning according to you. You can use the chat boxes if you if you don't intend to speak, hesitant to speak. There are four pillars. Who is to be taught? By whom will they be taught? What is to be taught and how is it to be taught? So according to you, these are the most important pillar, isn't it? It's not about you and me. It's about them. This session is not about me. It's about you. Absolutely. So whatever we plan, however we organize our session, right? Whatever, uh, I mean, the teaching aids we are picking up, right? It is so important for us to keep our students' kind interest in mind or else this whole exercise of you preparing, delivering, taking tests, evaluations and all that, it is down the drain. Always remember that the session, the teaching sessions are about the students. Don't make them about yourself, right? The language that you speak, the exercises you make them do, the engagement that you create, as the Shema said, you know, the examples that you pick up, when they see a lot of real life relevance in them, when they find it relatable, right? When they find some utility in those things that they feel that, okay, there's some value addition happening in their lives and they would like to be a part of your classrooms. So here I introduce two things to all of you. One is called as, the uh, you know catch variables and other ones are called as hold variables right so if you really want to make your sessions interesting the beginning has to be something unique and different so as you saw you know the session started with a song i could have started it with general discussion also right so in the beginning of the session because when you enter the classroom students are helter skelter their mind is all over the place right i mean learning is probably their last priority at that time so how do you catch their attention 
by you know sharing an anecdote or a story by adding some element of a small quiz right or do you know something or a headlines from the newspaper like yesterday donald trump you know you got the, there was an attempt to assassination isn't it or something from the world history something from world politics something very interesting from your own session can really make a lot of difference okay so try to begin your session with something very very interesting and students would be really uh, showing interest that what's going to happen in the class today how is my teacher going to open the session today right and let us understand and you know our classes are probably an hour long or one and a half hour long sometimes now the attention span is only for 40 minutes right after 40 minutes people start getting tired disinterested this and that so every 10 to 15 minutes the attention of the child is going to be all over the place it's like mind is like sheep all over the place so now you got to hold their attention bring it back to the classroom okay so something needs to be done after maybe you know once or twice during the class that the child whose mind is roaming and got distracted there is to do something like you know maybe humor cracking a little joke to bring everybody's attention back or something very interesting asking a question throughout this session you will see i'll keep asking you questions because when i ask questions you, you are bound to think right if someone will contribute someone will say something and if one of us has say something the other person also you know either gets motivated or gets a uh, little inspired right or we pick up clues from each other right so never make your classes classes very dry drudgery one sided traffic kind of places let your students be involved okay and the only way to involve is make your education or make the class relevant to them always remember please pick up your pens and papers and go to share an acronym with all of you please write it down in your notebooks the acronym is w three times i f m w three times i f m w three times i f m stands for what is in it for me i repeat what is in it for me every student wants to know why should i hear why should i listen to this person isn't it what is in it for me mujhe kya milega mera kya fayda hoga let your session sound like oh you no know, know what you're going to get out of today's session it is going to be very very useful for you for getting employment for understanding you know the concepts so that you can score well i do not know how and what bait you give to your students that they really see that yeah there is some relevance in it whatever this gentleman or whatever this lady is speaking it is making a lot of sense whatever my teacher is sharing it is going to be useful to for me right so i understand when the time you are um, teaching them maths and science like i teach life skills and you know soft skills and other sides of life which is which is immensely immensely useful in the real life thing right so uh, with your kind of subjects which are very very theoretical right i know it's going to be little challenging but then how can you connect relate certain anecdotes one of my very dear friends she has taught political science and polity all her life right which is one of the most uh, i would say useless subjects why because what we teach in the book politics political science does not work like that in real life right so she would relate it to so much of you know uh, contemporary politics she would narrate such interesting incidents of history polity and there would be so much of spice and juice and fun in her class that students really lap it up right so there can be a lot of story telling that happens in your classroom isn't it so um, I mean, you you got to think. You really need to think about it. That how can I really make it interesting? Like my son uh, is in plus two doing organic and organic chemistry, which which is which he finds very very dry, right? So every time the teacher will pick up uh, a subject or a or a session, you know he will he would tell them things like matchstick ke head pe kya laga hota hai, right? Rocket ke andar kya jata hai. और टूथ डिके होता है तो कौन सा मेडिसिन में क्या एलिमेंट होता है सो यू नो दिस सी दे दे स्टार्ट दे दे नाउ स्टार्ट फीलिंग दैट स्टडिंग केमिस्ट्री इज गिविंग देम सम रियल लाइफ इंफॉर्मेशन और यू नो नॉलेज ऑफ द रियल वर्ल्ड आल्सो 
so the more you are able to connect your teaching with real life making it relevant making it interesting engaging right the more will your students be alive in your classroom and let me tell you your energy is infectious when you dress up well and you're full of energy you love your subject you love the ones you're teaching right it is going to show in the classroom and the connect will be of a very very different level all right so most important thing is they must understand that the outcome of the learning is going to be something very useful for them right so make your classrooms very very goal interest goal uh, uh, oriented right and not just dry sessions where everybody has to absorb what is being taught right okay then second thing is like we discussed earlier also uh, the classes or the content that we are teaching in the classes somewhere catering only to the cerebral information it is only fulfilling some quest for knowledge if at all they have but human psychology says that there are three h's there is head there is heart and there are hands okay so probably science and uh, i mean the subject and the course and the curriculum is meeting the head ka needs the cognitive needs what about heart and hands right so if you really want to be an effective teacher please remember like every individual we have three physiological needs anybody there was a hindi movie also made on that three physiology basic needs jisko apan bolte anybody three basic needs there was a hindi movie also made on it with the same name basic needs roti kapda makan roti kapda aur makan yes manjit ma'am you said it hai na to jaise hum sab ki basic physical needs hoti hai aise hi hum sab ki basic psychological needs bhi hoti hai so if your classroom or if you as a teacher is able to fulfill that psychological need and what are those psychological needs to be seen to be heard and to be valued right so if you make your students feel seen heard and valued it is going to create the connect that uh, i think sumi ma'am was talking about okay so as teachers please remember to establish connections before correction if a teach if a student connects with you at an emotional level if you are able to listen to them when they come to the come to you with their issues and problems even though you may not have solutions to all of them if you are able to tell them in the class that their presence matters right how can we tell them that their presence matters you all take attendance right now there was a student who was absent for 3 days or 2 days or 4 days and now you can hear a yes ma'am once you call out the name you can always ask something like hey where were you for last 3 days we missed you in the class isn't it the fact that my teacher missed me is going to form a connection between you and your student so we do not realize the power of you know somebody said caring and sharing google can fulfill their knowledge and information needs google cannot fulfill their emotional needs my dear friends so being an effective teacher if you can go a little beyond the curriculum and the classroom right and fulfill the psychological need of being seen when you enter the classroom do you have a smile on your face do you actually connect and make an eye contact with all the students right from seat number 1 to the last seat right how energetic you are when you enter the classroom how excited you are about the classroom what does your body language say how do you dress up how do you show up is going to make a lot of difference to your classrooms isn't it so Uh, over the years you know there is we teachers also we feel so complacent or we feel ourselves we start feeling disinterested because a lot of times there is no reciprocation happening from the students right so you really really need to work a lot on your own you know readiness and motivation to teach i know over the years we tend to lose that because responsive nahi karte log hai na students receive hi nahi karte hum jo unse unke sath share karte right so it's very important that we understand that at the end of the day teacher student head of the department director principal they are all people we are all humans and all of us we humans we have shared psychological needs 
right? And if we are able to fulfill those psychological needs of to be seen, to be heard, and to be valued, and this is not just true for your students, it's true for your children, it is true for your partner, it's true for your colleagues, your subordinates, you will be the most liked person because you listen to people. Isn't it? You acknowledge their presence. Right? You make them feel valuable all my life, throughout my profession, 20 years. And this is what I've been doing. We have this very strong urge to speak about ourselves and, you know, gung ho, keep egocentric uh, narrative. Change it. Make it about other people. Every time somebody contributed in the session today, I acknowledge that. I do not know whether you noticed it or not. I said thank you for contributing. I said thank you, Sharma, sir, for keeping your camera on. I thank Sumi, ma'am, Gauzia, ma'am, Manjeet, ma'am, for their contributions. Right? This is how we acknowledge people. People love to be acknowledged. This is a basic psychological need. Start acknowledging people around you. Thank you, ma'am. Right? Now, again, an effective professional teacher remembers three A's always. And it's not about being a teacher. It's about being a good human or an effective human being. Right? Again, you can use your pens and papers and, and write down three, three A's. First A is attention. You want to be an effective teacher? Pay attention. Second A is appreciation. Isn't it? Let's acknowledge people for the contribution they are making, small or big. Your peon, your, your person who cleans your classrooms, the person who cleans the toilet, acknowledge their contribution. Yes. It is going to be so difficult to use the toilets if these people, they stop cleaning it for a week or so. The, the college will go on without you and me being present. But if the cleanliness people are not there, it's going to be reeking. Even the best of the teachers cannot do justice with their sessions in a dirty place. So attention, second is appreciation, and third is affection. Be genuinely affectionate towards people. Love is an antidote for anything and everything, isn't it? So it is so important that we learn and change, uh, add a, a bit of these elements to, to our uh, personality, OK? Third thing very important uh, in an effective teacher is, you know, students respect teachers who know how to be a contemporary educator, isn't it? So I would suggest you learn learn the uh, Gen, Gen X or Gen Z vocabulary. Use technology to your power. Surprise them with your, you know, with your knowledge of technology. Start using AI in your classrooms or, or your uh, assignments or your projects and research, etc. Use it. So, you know, Newton has given us a very simple law, which is every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Right. So if our actions are power packed and we are diligently evolving ourselves, somebody has written it also in the chat box that teachers have to be lifelong learners, not just the subject learner, but be smart enough to figure out. Learn what? Learn to harness technology to your favor. So important. Surprise your students. As I said, teach them a skill that they cannot gather on their own. Give them something which they feel is so useful that they could not have actually got it from anywhere else. For that, you got to read yourself. You got to keep yourself upgraded. You got to upskill yourself. And I'm so happy. At least there are 75 people online and four centers joined us with an intent of upskilling themselves. I promise you these sessions are really going to be very helpful in you, you know, chiseling and uh, improving your skills. Nobody knows it all. Nobody is perfect. Okay. Another important aspect um, of an effective teacher, please understand, is mindset. So I will always say this that you know, they teach us so much in mathematics. Yes, anybody. What is the formula for A plus B, the whole square? Anybody? You A can use the B square plus 2AB. Absolutely right, Manjit. Man. A square plus B square plus 2AB. Now, my plus question B. to everybody. 
a square plus b square plus 2ab right my question to everybody how many times have you solved a real life problem using a square plus b square plus 2ab how many conflicts got resolved how many arguments got resolved using this formula none isn't it so humko geometry mein bahut sare angle triangle and this angle and that angle sikhaya hai na bahut sare kon sikhaye par drishtikon nahi sikhaya mindset nahi sikhaya so despite having good education good salary uh i don't see very satisfaction very content kind of faces around me okay so the next thing that i'm going to share with you is what is called as ownership mindset versus tenant mindset right so anybody who is an effective professional a respected professional does not work like a talent tenant ka mindset right tenant mindset kya bolta hai tenant mindset says that i would do only that has been told to me to, to be done i would only i would not go beyond my defined role i will only do my job and nothing beyond that right so it's a very short term kind of a mindset like as if you're staying in someone else's house so i will not buy any good furniture i will not put a painting here etc 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 that is called as tenant mindset isn't it so i have got a job at the end of the month i'll get my salary so from the beginning to the end of the month i would just do as much as required to survive through the job on the other hand the owner mindset says when you live or work with a sense of belongingness as if the place belongs to you the students belong to you right and there is a sense of deep responsibility towards the subject the job and this is when we go beyond what is expected out of us isn't it we go beyond the classroom responsibilities and i take charge of the space around me also if there is some light which is extra some where water is running and it's getting wasted i feel the pinch because i belong here na and no matter what you say my dear friends this job that you are in is keeping your kitchen fires burning so we got to have a sense of reverence towards this job a sense of respect towards this job isn't it because there were so many people who aspired to be in the place that you are today i know how once we receive it we live it we we you know we we work with a sense of entitlement we we forget to be grateful because i know it's a permanent job for all of you most of you would be getting salaries as per seventh pay commission or if not seventh at least sixth pay commission right there are holidays and i know there are a lot of responsibility but there are so many perks of being a teacher too isn't it and we tend to forget all the good things that this job bring on table to our lives and we are caught up in the daily rut complaining about what's not okay and how things are not working as per your desire and how system is not functioning as you thought it would isn't it so let's change the narrative in our heads there are people who are struggling without jobs they wanted to be in the place that you are in in fact many of you had thought of being here few years ago and this was a dream once upon a time and you're living your dream but we undermine that so today on this call i really want to give everybody a shake up right i want you to think about your job from a very new fresh perspective from a very distinct perspective rather than criticizing and complaining i really want you to appreciate what you have isn't it there is not as much as pressure like corporate jobs have i know the salaries are humble i get that i understand that but this was a choice that we made na dr what's called me ma'am there is a session from 2:30 to 4 will you be able to take that i had a choice to say yes or no once i said a yes i will do justice with it no matter what or else i would i would have said sorry gentlemen i don't have time i won't be able to you know be here now that you have shook hands and become a stakeholder in the education system right it becomes our utmost responsibility to do justice with the job that has been assigned to us 
and we have jolly well taken this ownership and this responsibility isn't it so please understand that an effective teacher delivers with a sense of ownership because i tell you again you know i have been a psychologist for 20 23 years now it's not what you say that counts your actions count your body language counts isn't it your students don't just observe you during the classroom or they just don't listen to the to the lecture that you give it to them they observe you outside the classroom as well your your non verbal clues your gestures what you do what you do not do certainly has an impact on them so please don't undermine the value that you are or the impact that you are creating as a teacher in the lives of the students who who surround you and it's not a question of one year or two years you have 3 4 decades of service isn't it imagine thousands of students and i know a lot of you come from itis isn't it where the weakest uh, you know section of the society studies in iti because of you you know uh there are students who will get self dependent financially independent i mean i really really want you to see the impact you are creating and the value you are adding to your students life don't take it lightly my dear friends the more you you have the sense of ownership towards your job the greater value you'll be able to add to your students life right another perspective or mindset that i wish to share with all of you is called as growth mindset right now what happens is us um okay now my question to all of you which age group learns the fastest which age group learns the fastest uh, one to five years totally children isn't children. it yeah children learn the fastest so we may may ask you why why do you think children learn faster than adolescents and adults they don't have some pre knowledge or something like whatever the right. parents or the teachers are saying mm. uh, they are very raw they can grasp it easily yeah absolutely yes uh totally you know they know that they don't know and to know more they got to rely on somebody well said anybody else why do you think do you agree with sumi ma'am that children learn the fastest and if you yes, oh, ma'am even their brains are like you know uh, have a lot of space i must say maybe a more language there is nothing in their brains anything that goes that fit into it absolutely very true they are like sponges they absorb yes. a lot of things things around them right they are so curious they are And very curious to learn many things very right it is this curiosity to know more yeah, yeah, and yeah. this understanding of i don't know enough that makes them grow very true manjit ma'am you wish to add something yes ma'am ma'am they do the repetition of the things yeah isn't it they they revise they rehearse because they they acknowledge the fact that they don't know enough isn't it so they keep on asking questions and they keep rehearsing they keep revising and there is so much scope to add more uh, in their heads and as we start growing up we adults first of all the big head we develop ego i know it all who can teach me isn't it so we develop what is called as a fixed mindset we stop asking questions because we have fear of evaluation isn't it uh the curiosity reduces because we think we know a lot about our subjects and the world around us isn't it we also feel that mera mazak udayenge somebody will laugh at me if i ask a question or they'll think that mujhe itna bhi nahi aata hai na to karte karte kya hota hai ha hum seekhna kam kar dete hain we we stop learning or the pace of learning or the learning curve you know becomes kind of parallel to x axis so another very impactful effective uh, aspect of a effective teacher or a professional teacher is they have a growth mindset of their own and the same growth mindset they instill in their students also right now carol dweck is uh, the lady is the professor uh i think from one of the ivy league colleges i'm forgetting the name of the college dr carol dweck has written a book called mindset where she has bursted this myth around 
you know, Andrew Gorn is learning. Andrew Gorn is learning. That is adult learning. She says nothing wrong with our brain. It can still imbibe and gather and acquire a lot of knowledge. But the problem is with the perspective, the mindset. I know it all. If I work too, too hard to get something, people will think I don't know enough. I can't ask questions. I can't acknowledge or admit a failure is what we adults do. Isn't it? So I think uh, uh, Mr. Sharma was talking about very democratic classrooms. So democratic classroom is where a teacher also, you know, very openly talks about their shortcomings or their learning or their quest for learning or um, their failures and how they have overcome those failures. Isn't it? Where teachers are also becoming a role model after telling them what is the latest, latest book that you have read? What is the latest paper you have written? The latest conference you have attended? The training sessions that you are doing with the with the resource people from NITRTR, isn't it? So all of you who are present here, not just for a piece of paper called certificate, but to actually learn, you have a growth mindset, isn't it? So always remember that the biggest room in the world is room for improvement. No matter where we are in our careers, how much we learn or how much we know already, there is always scope for more. Isn't it? And once you get addicted to learning, oh, the graph of personal and professional growth will hit the roof. Isn't it? So when a person has a fixed mindset, they're only bothered about the outcome. Marks kitne aai. Package kitne ka hai. But a person who has mastery, mastery mindset or, or a, a you know growth mindset, they will focus on the process. Because if the process is right, the outcome is bound to be in your favor. There are no two ways about that, right? People who have a fixed mindset, they assume that intelligence or any talent is natural. No, fixed mindset only talks about natural talent. Growth mindset says anybody can learn. A, B, C, L. Anybody can learn at any stage in their lives at any age at their lives. Fixed mindset people say that if you are smart and if you do not make errors and you don't have to work hard, you know, because you're a natural, you're a born talented person. Mastery mindset said this notion of being born intelligent, born talented or being a natural or being a genius is a myth. It actually has to do with effort. It actually needs to do with the old adage, hard work. There are no bubble lifts to success. There is a lot of hard work involved in the whole process. And how to share it with the students? You know, the problem is we only celebrate success. We only celebrate somebody where he or she has reached a certain level. Nobody talks about their hardships their journeys, their challenges, and how they overcome that challenges. Isn't it? When we start emphasizing on failures and vulnerabilities and how people who are successful had this mindset to overcome these failures and vulnerabilities, that we will start doing justice with uh, this mindset called as growth mindset. Right? So people with growth mindset they obviously have very high self-esteem. They, they really persist for a very long period of time because the simple reason, they are obsessed with fine-tuning the process. We are obsessed with the outcome or the results. No wonder there's so much cheating happening in India to get good marks. Students won't know the concept. They don't know the process. But marks are good enough, right? Because we are obsessed with the outcome. So all of you, who are listening to me on this call, be it your children, be it your students, be it you yourself. Focus on the process and the outcome will automatically follow. If you know the ingredients of the cake, if you know how to make a cake, the cake will actually come out delicious. But while making the cake, if you're actually freaking about, about how will the cake taste, what will it look like, you're going to mess up for sure. Isn't it? So focus on the process. Remain curious all your lives. Have a learner's mindset all your lives. 
right? And always remember the biggest room in the world is room for communication, isn't it? Oh, a room for improvement. And uh, another very important aspect after growth mindset and after talking about uh, uh, ownership mindset, the next important thing is communication skills, right? Now, to uh, talk about communication skills, let us look at, let, I mean, let me share a video with all of you. this one life to live fleeting shadow amongst all that exists in this vast universe we have the ability to accomplish anything truly anything if we use our time wisely is this jar full Is it full now? Yes. And how about now? Is the jar full now? Yes. I want you to recognize that this jar represents your life. Golf balls are the important things, your family, your friends, your health, and your passions. The pebbles are the other important things, your car, your, your job, your home. And the sand is everything else. It's just a small stuff. Now, if you put the sand in the jar first, you won't have room for the pebbles or the golf balls. The same is true of life. You spend all your energy and your time on the small stuff. You won't have time for all the really important things that matter to you. Pay attention to the things that are critical to your happiness. Take care of the golf balls first, the really important things. Set your priorities, because everything else is sad. Uh, professor, what does what the beer represent? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. It goes to show that no matter how full your life may seem to be, there's always been a couple of years. Yes. What did you gather about communication here? Anybody? What did you pick up about communication? Yes. Okay, forget about communication. What did you see happening in the video? There was an illustration happening, isn't it? So more we bring our sessions alive by involving certain props, isn't it? By adding an element, a zing, a little spice of surprise and engage the students by asking them certain questions, the more alive the classroom is going to be like. Okay, so a teacher is a fantastic communicator. Basically, you know, a teacher is a storyteller. All right, it's not just small babies who love to hear these bedtime fairy tales. We adults also love to listen to stories. So the more the element of stories in your classroom, greater will be the student engagement, right? And uh, more effective your classrooms would look like. And as much as a speaker that you need to be, a good, good teacher needs to be a great listener. God has given us two ears and one mouth to speak, right? The more you listen to your students, the more you attune yourself to their needs, right? 
and more you attune yourself to your needs, the more likable you become. Right? We elders, we adults have this full time desire or a need to just keep on saying things, lecturing, uh, supervising, telling people what's right, what is not. Change the paradigm. Become a listener. Just ask questions and get things out of your out of your people. That could be students, that again could be children, that could be your spouses. You can become such a likable person if you master this art of listening. So, so important, right? So, uh, one of the most uh, effective books ever written on uh, communication is How to Win Friends and Influence People right? by Stephen Covey, I suppose, right? He said, I went to a party and I was... It was a new town. I didn't even know anybody, any person there. And after the party got over, the host especially called me and said, what did you do, Stephen? Everybody was so full of you. He said, trust me, I did not speak much. I was just interested in what they were telling me and what they were interested in sharing with me. So you want to be an effective teacher? You want to be a likable adult? Get interested in your students and your children's interests. Instead of, you know, I mean, bombarding them with what you like, what your life was, Amare Zamane Me, and all that stuff. I start asking questions, right? Um, get attuned to their lives. Speak a language that they speak. Know their vocabulary as well, right? That is really going to make a lot of difference uh, to the relationship that we share with our students, isn't it? rest you know it when you when you are very passionate about your subject and you really know your subject well uh, it shows i told you now your energy is infectious it's really going to show up in the in your classroom in so many different ways right so my suggestion to all of you is dress up very well for your classes look really prim and proper right and be full of energy when you get into your classroom have your catch and hold factors in place. No, they are not really, really interested in getting educated because they have other sources of getting the knowledge or the information from. What they are more interested in is forming connections. Okay, so be an adult who has mastered the art of forming connections by becoming a great listener, by being a good storyteller, by relating what's happening in the classroom with the real lives, by giving an answer to this, uh, what is in it for me, right? By being extremely passionate about your subject and most important, be very clear about your why. Why am I doing what I am doing? Isn't it? And valuing the, the, the contribution that you are making in capacity of the teacher that you are, right? So these were the small little things that I wanted to share with all of you. I hope you found them useful. I would really like to hear it from a few of you that what is going to stay with you from today's session? What is your take home from today's session? Anything new that you picked up or something that you really related, something that you could relate with in today's session? Thank you, Dr. Putta. Yes. What's your take home? What did what is going to stay with you as a teacher or as a as a wonderful human that you are? Madam, in my view, so your last words, we have to relate with the things. I think it, it speaks everything. Yes. Relatedness, isn't it? We we, we want connections. Yeah. Absolutely. What else? What about other participants? What do you, were you there? Did you listen? Anything that's going to stay with you? Conduct activities to engage these students. Mm. Conducting certain activities where they are hands on into, into it. Wonderful, Manjit Ma. Fantastic. Thank you. What else? Yes. Any high point of today's session? Anybody? Okay. Uh, Sathi Sharma ji says, uh, Going to be a good listener. Great. Yes, that will really pay off. What else? What else is one of the most powerful questions to ask, by the way? 
it really ignites thinking any questions anybody yes go beyond the curriculum so important curriculum to wo kitab se bhi padh lega na then what's what's the point of you and me being in the classroom absolutely going beyond the sub, the prescribed curriculum going beyond the walls of the classroom and making place in their hearts for ourselves ready to listen very very important all right so in case there's no question i would request i would thank everybody who shared their perspectives and uh, added uh, you know they they contributed to the session over to you kamal that's all from my side ma'am i would like to add one thing that i would... yes rohit sir i appreciate that i found most profound was that there should be a lot of student engagement mm -hmm. at the same sure. time uh, we should like uh, not only focus on rote learning like our system works but also make the students you know think by their own yes you said that and the easiest way to do that rohit sir is by asking questions just master the art of asking questions if a students come to you for a solution don't give them a ready made solution ask them to think ask them you know prompt prompt prompting questions what can you change what can you add what can you delete or how can you modify i think this is the biggest gift as a teacher you can give to your students they say na don't give them a fish teach them how to catch a fish yes ma'am absolutely very well said akilesh sir a teacher must have the passion and student engagement isn't it so yes we all know the shoulds and the musts of being an effective teacher but the question is how much are we applying it that's the most important question and how much pain do we take to to translate the theoretical knowledge that all of us we have in you know in our real life interactions with the students and it is going to take a lot of commitment trust me it is going to take commitment okay so i uh, i know you are brilliant as teachers and you are fantastic as humans right let's self introspect today reflect on ourselves today and figure out how can i become even better in my craft than where i stand thank you manjeet ma'am for acknowledging and thank you everybody for contributing i'm going to meet you again tomorrow uh, on another session uh, again enhancing the effectiveness of a teacher thank you very much